All right, greetings everyone. It's now half past six UK time and we're going to start our presentation looking at the amazing career of Dr. Erna Rodber of Jamaica. On the screen in front of you, you can see some of our coming events. We have 22 events coming up in the next two, well, two months. <clears throat> some are online, some are physical. You can see some are listed there and I'd say about two thirds of the events see that are free, and the others are six pounds, ten pounds, and I think that'll break the bank. So you're you're welcome to go and book on the various events there, and I'll mention a bit more about the events in detail later on. <laughs> so this event is brought to you as a collaboration between Black History Walks. Uh, we organize walks, talks and films on black history in London each month of the year, every single month for the last uh, 15 years now. And the uh, Sarah Park Remont Centre, which is part of the University College of London. So between these two organizations, we've organized a number of different events um, looking at history and empire and colonization. And this is just one of them and one that we, we're really looking forward to. I think most people use Zoom before, but if you haven't used Zoom before, for this presentation, we'll take questions and answers at the end when the speakers are finished speaking, and we'll use the chat function, um, which is circled in red at the bottom there. So if you want to ask a question, question, call on to the end of the session, and we'll uh, see the question from the chat function and relate to our presenters. So the format will basically be, I'm just introducing the, um, the presentations as a whole, we're going to hear from Dr. Michelle Santa shortly, and she'll have a conversation with Dr. Anna Broadburn, who's in Jamaica right now, um, for about an hour or so. And then we'll have a little intermission or some updates, and then we'll have a QA with Dr. Michelle Santa and Dr. Anna Broadburn. Just in case you've not heard of Dr. Michelle Santa, she is a publisher. You can see some of her work there um, in search of Mammy Waters, a most recent publication, which you can find uh, online right now. And also you can order it directly from her. And it's looking at African spirituality around the world in imagery. And then you've got something buried, buried in the yard, another book from um, Dr. Asantua. Um, and she specializes in Comfer, which is a surviving African spiritual system that you can be found in Guyana. And other than that, she's a lecturer. She's got a PhD in literature, of course. And she's a course leader on the amazing James Baldwin course, as well as the African Women Resistance Leaders course, which is one of our most popular courses. And we'll be doing that again shortly. But for today, she is our host. And without further ado, I'll hand over to Dr. Michelle Asanto. Greetings. Thank you. Thank you, um, Tony, so much for your introduction. Uh, welcome, everybody, to this very special conversation, grounding, spirit and ting talk <laughs> with our <laughs> delightful uh, sister here, uh, Dr. I will, I kind of want to know, should I call you sister? Should I call you, you you're everything, like, <laughs> um, doctor. But anyway, Erna Brodberg. So, um, will do. sister will do. Sister will do, sister will do. okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, big sister. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I just need to do the, the quick formality of introducing our sister, especially to those, for those of you who, are not so aware, which is ridiculous, but I understand that there are um, some people who might not be aware of who um, Dr. Erna is. So I just need to just do this bit here, which is to say that Dr. Erna Brodba, or Sister Erna, um, is an anthropologist, sociologist, historian, novelist, teacher, and community activist. Her body of work is a unique interdisciplinary approach to community development, balancing academic inquiry with strategies for the empowerment of Africans in the diaspora. Four of her acclaimed novels, Jane and Louisa Will Soon Come Home, Mile, Louisiana, The Rainmaker's Mistakes, and a collection of lectures, The Continent of Black Consciousness, were published by the UK's foremost Black-owned independent press, New Beacon Books, and some of you will remember that 
I was in con conversation some months ago with uh, um, Michael LaRose, who I'm hoping is on this um, call for Zoom soon as well. A fifth novel, Nothing's Matt, was published by the University of the West Indies Press. And that was the latest novel. And um, we'll get to hear a little bit about that hopefully soon. Um, these titles uh, evoke social and cultural experiences that are embedded in the collective psyche to which communities can draw for shared understanding. Themes of African derived spirituality, resistance and social development recur in these powerful, mostly female centered narratives. Mythical liminal characters act as cultural memory through which ancestral wisdoms and historical experiences are articulated, serving as literature of resistance against colonial devices that sought to discredit African folkloric, non-Western ways of knowing. As I said before, um, Dr. Erna Brodwa is essentially my big sister and mentor. Um, so this kind of, this, I see this as a spirit and ting grounding, and it's a rare privilege to be doing so. Um, and um, yeah, so I just wanted to um, acknowledge that and introduce you thus, um, Sister Erna, um, and to say that my first uh, encounter, if you like, with you, the first time I, I met you or your work was in, um, at the University of Stirling many years ago when I was doing my undergraduate. So this is for me a real like head expanding moment um, because I was introduced to your work by Angela Smith. I don't know if you ever had the chance to go to Stirling University. Um, so the point of saying all of this is I come into you at an academic level, but then eventually I would get to understanding you at a spiritual level. Um, so welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Erna. Thank you for uh, joining us. I know it was not, it's not easy because you're in this wonderful space, which I hope you'll be able to tell us about as well. I want to thank Catherine, your sister-in-law, who has enabled this to, to be possible for you to, for us to have the privilege of speaking with you uh, this evening. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. Um, Sister Erna has kindly shared some of her unique images. And whilst for the most time, every time I've seen you, you've spoken, you speak about your, yourself and your, your, your family. I, I feel that this, I, I would like that to be the, the, the most of this session about your, your, your ancestors, yourself, um, and what you bring um, in terms of your work from that grounding. So um, let me share the screen and then you can talk us through some of these images that you have shared with me. Um, I'm hoping that everybody can see that. Tony, can you see the image? Yeah, just make it full screen, so you've got to do. Okay, okay. Let me start again because there's a, there's a funny thing that you've got to do with this system before that happens. Um, yeah. Bear with me, everybody. We did this. We had a practice with this. <laughs> That's always. Um, okay, so I want to say that I'm doing that and I want to do that. Can you see it full screen now, Tony? Not just. No, because yet. I haven't shared it yet. Okay, there we go. That should be it. Here we go. That should be full screen. Right. You're good to go. Full screen. All right. Just for the, in, in case, for those of you who aren't aware of the body of work, these are um, Sister Erna's publications. Go and look to them. I know that having taught and continue to teach um, Sister Erna's work, I have introduced this to uh, many of my students, and I'm hoping that some of you are here and are able to get this uh, privilege uh, opportunity. But these are some of the books and these were mostly, as I said, published by New Beacon Books, except for Nothing's Matt, which was the University of um, Guyana, um, not Guyana. West, University. West Indies. <laughs> Thank you. This voice, oh, it's, <laughs> hello, Uncle Eric. Um, okay, so, Sister Erna, I'm gonna let you speak now. 
and take us through some of these um, beautiful images. Um, I'm hoping it's, it's doing justice to the images is how I got them. They're very obviously um, kind of old image, but they're lovely. Um, so can you tell us who, the, who these people are that we're seeing? Okay, shall I start? Of course you can. Okay, to the far left, my far left is a lady who I have the great, for whom I have the greatest respect. That is my grandmother, Eva Harris, the greatest respect. Um, I'll tell you why. Um, at, when my mother, who's the eldest of her seven children, was nine years old, her husband died, leaving her with the seven children. I know her to be a lady who was a farmer. She, she, she planted sugarcane. She had a, 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 a Milan copper. I don't know how many people know what a Milan copper is, but that is how you made sugar in those days. It was a big, big, big vat. Of course, a big building with um, a big building that could hold a big mill, which the, which the cows pulled around, pulled around, and the cane was fed into, and the, the, the juice went in um, tunnels down to the copper, that big thing bigger than the, 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 the circumference of this, of my hands that are waving around. And she made sugar, but she also was a baker. So use the sugar that she made in, into bun and bulla cake and jackass corn and all sorts of things. And the, 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 the oven that she had was twice the, the, the height of any of her grandchildren, twice her own height because she had to put a mortar, a mortar at the bottom and stand on that to push her baked or pre-baked things into the oven. So this is a one man, one woman manufacturing exercise. She did the planting, she did the, the sugar making and she did the baking. And of course she did the marketing by sending out her, her sons upon their doggy cart to sell the things out. So it was a one woman enterprise. And still she managed to tell us stories and she managed to tease us, her grandchildren, and she really and truthfully loved us and needed us. Uh, what she, one of the things she taught me, and I tried to do what it, with my own grandchild, but I don't think it worked very well. Each one of us had a coconut tree. She planted a coconut tree for every child coming into this world. Um, that meant that if push come to shove and hard times came, you could sell the coconuts. So she was setting us up to take care of ourselves financially. Yes, she did that. And um, not only did she do that with, with planted things, she did that with animals. So she kept rabbits and we, we all had our rabbits. So this is how what my grandmother was. And this is what she let off to me. She, she wasn't very, um, she was a frightening person. I found her frightening. Not so my brother and my sister, whom I'm sandwiched between. They could manage with her and, and, and she could give them the love. But I find her, found her frightening because she, she would do things like we would, at least to me, I loved my home in Woodside. She lives seven miles away. And on very many occasions, I would be at her house and she would say, you're going home tomorrow and I'm getting ready for tomorrow. And tomorrow just never comes because she wants a company, but I want to leave. And so I would sit and watch the bus moving away while my grandmother is still telling me that tomorrow I'm going to go. <laughs> so um, that part of it, I didn't like at all. I can stand afar, far off and say, I respect my grandmother, but I really do have these sad parts of her, which I suppose come across because she needed company. And I suppose <laughs> grandchildren are supposed to be the company of old people. But this one did not want to be the company. I wanted to go back home to Woodside, mm -hmm. where I was born, mm -hmm. and where I loved this man in the middle of the second, the second, um, the second picture. Mm -hmm. And this man tells me he does not recall my being left at my grandmother at all. But <laughs> I remember very clearly this man riding on a horse, accompanied by a friend on another horse coming and picking me up and saying he needs his daughter, okay? 
and I he put me in the front and I was I was against his breast and he rode as I, I fell asleep right away. All I remember is getting off of the horse and being put in the house. Um, I think I was sort of crazy about my grandmother there and badly needed to come home. And that that love of my father, he could do any, anything, but the love of my father, that man knowing how I felt, who came for me, put me on his chest and rode me back home, I can never, ever forget. Now, beside him to my left is this, 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 this man with a straight shoulder. This man is a man called Alex Bradbaugh that is the father of my father. This is my grandfather. I didn't have very much to do with Olelik, as he was called. I didn't have very much to do with him. But he's there, he's there, was very influential in the life of my father. My father spoke a lot about him. As a matter of fact, my father did not leave home until he was 30. So he learned all of the history that my grandfather had. And, and so he was the historian of the family, my father. To his right, is one of his sisters. I know I don't know why she's carrying a bunch of flowers, but she's carrying a bunch of flowers. I suspect that they're going to church. I don't know why we don't know for sure what they were doing, nor who took the picture, but there it is. Uh, my grandfather, my father, and an aunt are standing up there as memories that my grandfather is standing up like a pillar. So he probably is a pillar of something or another. Okay, yes, sir. So that those are my, my maternal grandmother in the chair and my paternal grandfather, my father, and um, his sister. Those are the people on the screen right now. Thank you. And it's to them in there. Um, we are, we're pouring libation <laughs> um, to them and honoring them, um, particularly um, as well as we go through this. Um, yes, so yes, yes. And I, mean, I need to tell you that in Jane and Louisa, mm -hmm. many of the stories, they believe the concept of the Kumbla came from my father. Right. A lot of Jane and Louisa is my father. Those mm -hmm. stories are my father. My father was a great storyteller. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And so you would attribute your storytelling um, wisdom to your father, mainly? My father, yes, yes, yes. My mother didn't do very much of that, but my father was always telling us stories. Always. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. we, so, so, yeah, so, so who are these here, um, Sister Anna? Those are, those, that is my mother in the middle. Mm -hmm far left that is my mother in the middle mm -hmm. and that very decent child smiling properly with her hair bow and our, our short dress and doing just the right thing it is my sister Velma Pollard she, <laughs> she continues to do the right thing okay mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. see there the right thing and that is me on the other side with my big forehead and my arm <laughs> and my hair bow not so right and the try I can remember I was about three and they're trying to get me to smile. And that is about as much of the smiling that I could manage. But the forehead is obviously very recognizable. Um, um. <laughs> the forehead, you can see the forehead, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And this is you two um, grown up now looking back. No, no, no. That's my mother and a friend at our oh. house. My mother and a friend, yes. My mother, notice the lead neck, which I have got from her. <laughs> the lady on the, on the right is my mother, and her leg kneels down like mine. Like I got that lead neck from her. Mm. Okay, okay. I just imagine you, you put in all of these um, descriptors um, in, in the story, but in your stories. But let's go along. Um, and these. Can anybody, let's see if people actually can recognize you now, if you're saying that you have a, 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 for, a forehead that's protruding. Can anyone recognize Sister Erna in this picture? Because I, obviously I also had to locate you. Anyone recognize? If you can, you can put it in the chat and say um, bottom, wherever, middle, wherever. Anyone? No, they're really looking because obviously I had enough time to do that. Um, Oh, yes. Here we go. Is that correct? There I am with the arrows. The arrows are correct. The arrows are correct. The okay. arrows are correct. Okay. So where were these taken? These were high school. I mean, to go in my days, there was no high school in the parish of St. Mary where I lived. So everybody went to Kingston or somewhere like for high school. And I went to Excelsior. And um, I was 
a pass through her famous Abby Baxter. There she is in the middle, that whitish lady, that's Abby Baxter. And um, this is the gym team. Um, well, as you can see, we're there in our shorts and we do all sorts of things like jump on horses mm -hmm. and stand, do handstands and, and all the rest of it. But this was special because there was a fair and we were doing it as an exhibition. exhibition. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you can't see my shorts because the lady who patched up, who carpentered these shorts, <laughs> didn't understand that they should be a little tighter at the leg. So when I did my handstand, it was like a skirt opening. <laughs> and all of my private self was there. Uh -oh. I remember a visitor said, oh my God, look at that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but that didn't matter to me. This was what I had, and this was what I had to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, there I am, there sitting there. And um, this, this, the, the, the second one is in fifth form. I think you would understand fifth form. This is where we take our senior Cambridge exams. Mm -hmm. So there I am sitting in the front there. With, I have to tell you about this gentleman is Armando Amonus Bennett. Armando Amonus Bennett. He was a legend. Um, you look at the color of us there. We are mixed and we are black mostly. But this was not like that for every school. There were schools like Immaculate Conception where everybody was more or less, if not, if not white, fair. And um, so on. There were these high schools which were, which were full of whitish students. This school that I went to was built by a man who felt that it was necessary for his children who had passed through elementary school and couldn't get into any other any high school because they were too old. This was for them. So he built Excelsior for people like us. So we're mostly country people and mostly black people. The thing I remember uh, um, about Excelsior is that you were there because you were bright. And who came first was very important, very, very important. Who came first was very important. Some schools who, who, who had here that was long was important, but it wasn't very important for us. Until my teachers decided that like every other school, we should have a beauty contest. And I'm here to tell you that all those teachers that I loved that knew how beautiful my writing was, all of these teachers, Nice black people who went off to Canada to study or America to study and couldn't get into the, the elite high schools and had to come to teach at Excelsior. All these marvelous people took their flashlights and went through the school looking for all the brown, brown girls with curly hair. All the brown girls with curly hair. I will never ever forget that nor forgive it, but it also taught me that in this business of being a black girl, you are on your own. You have to work the thing out yourself because the elders have been so um, crystallized in, um, in, in lack of acceptance of themselves that they can't lead you nowhere. But at the crowning of the queen, Armando Amonus Bennett walked out, walked out, it was clear to all of us that it was, a, it was, a, um, it was what you call it now, he was making a statement. He walked out and I heard him say, in a school like Excelsior, the queen should be, Gutsmore and Gutsmore was a girl who was very great at at um at, at at athletics and could play the piano for worship and all like that. She was an all-arounder and he walked, but of course she was black and she didn't have much hair. Hair couldn't go into pony kit tail or anything like that. So my teachers would not have seen her as a possible beauty queen. But Armando Amonus Bennett left me with the notion. That is not, I'm not standing by alone, alone. There are people like him who understand that there is another aesthetic. It doesn't have to be brown with curly hair. If you are doing your work and doing it well, then you are beautiful. Thanks to Armando Amonus Bennett. I don't know what happened to him, but there he is sitting among us, yes. Oh, thank you for that story, um, Sister Erna. That was like, I was just, I, I was just away with that. I'm just amazed at, the, at your memory. I'm amazed that you even have these, these photos. How many of us can really say that we have any such photos? 
um, to, to, and memories, um, which obviously is something that will feature uh, um, as we go along as well. Um, I don't know whether now would be the time or if we talk about it later, but I do have a note here where you mention about a great grandmother. Let's hope to come back to the great grandmother. Let me, let me add something to this okay, go on. here. And I think I'm adding that. I went up to Washington one day and I happened to go to Howard. And I went into a, uh, I went into a, a, a room and there was a black woman there from Jamaica and she had been to Excelsior. And the one thing we talked about was this event here. She had left Jamaica and gone up and did whatever she had to do and was working at Howard. But th what happened to us there was so strong that it went with her. And the first thing that we talked about when we remembered Excelsior was what our teachers had done us. Mm. And also, <laughs> with, did she remember what Armanda, what's his name again? Um, the, the... No, Armanda Amonus Bennett. No, she didn't mention him because I don't know why mm. she didn't mention him. Probably she didn't hear what he said. You oh, know? Okay, okay. I was, I was, I, God put me in a position where I could hear what he said and see yeah. him striding. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I mean, we, we'll come back to the great grandmother that you, or. Yes to do that that summoning you to compelling you with your new pro project but let's continue with these lovely images as well yeah. isn't that lovely the lady on the left on my yes. left absolutely yes, lovely yes. there she is she's 1718 yes where uh -huh. is she going? where is she where is she going i don't think she's going anywhere i think the dress was made for the for the end of term party Oh, but you know, it was such a nice dress and such a nice shape and all that beautiful crinoline that I had big picture had to be taken. Oh, it's she gorgeous. Went, she went somewhere, she went somewhere. And so it had to be uh, memorialized. It's stunning. There she is. Okay. Yes. And okay. the other ones? Well, on the far right is a group of girls. We called ourselves the Ties. The Ties. Um, we were all we all studied English literature. Not all of us studied maths. I didn't, but I studied literature and the one behind me studied literature and the one behind me was literature. We're all literature students. And we happened to go downtown Kingston one day, Saturday. And we had no money because children coming to Excelsior from country don't have money, but we'd have no money. But we decided that we we're going to buy something. And we saw some old ties, some old red ties, which were, they were throwing away. And we asked the store person if we could have them. And they said you could pay for them. And it, it did the cheapest thing you could get, just like chopons, each of us. So we bought these ties and we wore these ties. And uh, we were known as the ties. The girl in the front, her name is Ty. And so we invited her into a photograph because she's Ty. But um, that, those are the ties. Okay. Yes. okay. Only one of us is gone. There's still three of oh, us. Oh yeah, around. I was going to ask you if they were still around. Only one of us is gone. I did the eulogy and mentioned the ties. Okay. okay. Do you communicate with the others then? Still. Oh yes, I do. I do. I do. I do. We do. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. so how old were you even in that one? Is that the same time? Sixteen. Um, so More or less. I'm sixteen. I'm sixteen. Same time as a, as this marvelous. Um, person Gorgeous. on the far left, yes, okay. yes. And the, this one in the middle? This one in the middle is at the University of the West, Indies. it was in the University College of the West Indies, bracket land, okay. And um, it was kind of a carnival band, a carnival band, I'm sure you can't find me. I can't, can't find, find you myself. straight away. I'm sure people find you a long me? time. Yeah, you're straight, uh -huh. straight away. <laughs> I can see. I just didn't put the arrow there because I thought. Okay, okay. Well, there, yes. there, there. Yes, I'm there. I yeah. don't know why that that one that name was chosen for this band. I don't think we even came in, but um, there we are in a carnival band. Yes. Okay. okay, great. Okay. Uh -huh. Ah, I did put the arrow in. <laughs> no, you're right. That is me. That is me. I'm sorry that that is that you have discovered me. Because this is the most unflattering. This most unflattering image of me that exists. Yes. No, not at all. You look very athletic. You look very sporty to me in that um, in that image. Go mm -hmm. on. Okay, here it kind of fast forwards a bit. Um, mm -hmm. So, is this your son? This is my son. 
And he was with me at this time. He was with me for about a year. He came to me when he was two, two and a half. So he looks like he looks like two and a half, three right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well, having written abandonment of children in Jamaica, mm -hmm. it seemed to me that the next thing to do was to take one of these abandoned children. Mm -hmm. So that is me and my moving from academics into practicality. So there we are, me and Timothy. Okay, okay. And Timothy, ha Timothy has children now. Timothy has one child, one beautiful, beautiful grand grandchild I have. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't sure where we are here, but um, you could fill us in to this bit now. Far left, no matter how the house in which I live has gone through several, what do you call them? Um, Tomatoes, changes. Several changes. This is, this is the last change with me looking through a window. That window doesn't exist anymore. Where that mm -hmm. window is, is now um, a new, a new um, apartment with those windows there are, are where my closed closet is. Okay. Okay. That is one of the, one of the periods of my life. Mm -hmm. People come to my house and wonder when they will open the gate and just step into the house because uh, they can't keep up with the movements <laughs> of this house at all. Mm -hmm. but I'm finished now, I'm finished now. I have nothing else to add to this house, it is there. Oh. Okay, so the, uh, the house on the other side then? The house on the other side is part of what is now the house. Right, okay. different? Uh, that is now the house. Okay. That's the house, and it's more than the house. It's one of the latest things to be on. It is my bookshop, which is called the Farmer's Daughter, in honor of my father. Mm -hmm. And um, occasionally, people used to say, um, "I hope New Beacon is listening." People used to say they can't get the books. So what I would do was order them from New Beacon, have them, and people could come and buy them from me. I haven't done that in a very very long time. But there is a building there. Mm. And there's my son. He's giving a concert. Oh, okay. Piano, but there's a, there's a concert. Yeah, I can see it in the background. There are, people, there are people sitting around. So this is where we spoke of early. You would have, is this home? Is this uh -huh. home, the space from your, your family? Um, the space, yes. Yeah, okay, great. And the people in the middle here? People in the middle. This, the man is my uncle. He's the youngest of, of my father's siblings, but he's the one that took on the responsibility or forced to take on the responsibility of all of us. My sister calls, calls where he lived, Athens, because so many of the, his nieces and nephews went there for learning. There you went and you sat your exams and you passed your exams because he insisted that you passed them. Uh, so, so I associate him with Athens. I didn't go to Athens. I stayed with my father in Woodside. And I don't think I did badly. And the lady on the, the lady on the on, on on the right, on the outside in the blue thing, mm -hmm. is a person who is extremely for me, she's very lovely. Not everybody thinks, but she's very lovely. She was a favorite of mine. And you know, I tell the story, and my family tells the story about how I went to spend a weekend with her. And it was the most delightful weekend in my life. She read her book and I read my book. And that is all that happened between us until my uncle came and messed up the whole thing. She's his, she's his wife, but we had this marvelous weekend. I think she felt like me, like I felt too. We just stayed in our, in our rooms and read our books and had this marvelous spiritual movement going between us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the lady in the middle is one who says that I resemble her. That's an aunt, okay. Mm -hmm. Sarah, mm -hmm. Aunt Dolly. Okay. Uh, your, 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 your father's sister. My father's sister. And they are there for something we used to have annually, family day, when all, all, all of us who have that name and who are attached to that name would meet right where they are there at my house, in my yard. Mm. Okay, mm. great, mm. thank you. Uh, again, we're kind of fast forwarding, but um, here, these are, this is a picture that you sent as well. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you see John LaRose? Yes, I recognize John LaRose. Mm -hmm. So this is in the UK. How long were you in the UK for? 
Oh, it was just a year. I was on fellowship leave. One right. year fellowship leave. I was at the University of Sussex. Uh, and I came up for the West Indian Carnival. So what you're seeing there is the West Indian Carnival. What year was this around? Um, and, and I'm beside John with my scratchy yeah, my head. I see you here there. Yeah, yes. I should have put that up. I can I could see you and recognize yes. you. Why are there police and so on there? It's just, just, just generally regularly. But isn't that how it goes? The <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Just generally yeah. regularly. The police are just policing. Crowds mm -hmm. of Africans gathered. Mm -hmm. Right. You must be um, in trouble to make trouble. So at this time, were you um, based, what was your university? Because this was a, a fellowship. I was teaching at the University of the West Indies. Right. And um, I, I forgot what the program was, but um, mm -hmm. you could apply for fellowship leave to go to a British mm -hmm. or, a, or a Commonwealth University. Well, I mm -hmm. chose to, to go to Sussex because mm -hmm. the work I was doing, doing was um, somebody was somebody at Sussex was doing similar work. What I was doing was collecting um, collecting um, histories, family histories, mm -hmm. family histories, and other other things from people who were who were at that time seventy and over. Mm -hmm. That was old at that time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, long. Okay. And there are some others here. Um, and this is still London, still, still the UK. No, 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 no. That's the only thing of the UK I think I have. This okay. one here on the left is in Somalia. Ah, okay, okay. That's Somalia. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. thinking about is whether you did ever get to Africa. Yes, that's Somalia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the one and in the, the middle with me, regal in Jamaican colors, mm -hmm. is um, is taken in Australia. Okay. Australia, where I went to receive my prize for right. For, okay, okay. Yeah, I wasn't able to connect with some of the pictures, so this will there's that one is will come after that. And so, what was this one in the this one? That here? one is my forty second birthday. Uh, my sister gave me a party. Mm. We called it twenty one multiplied by two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? <laughs> why not just why not just your your forty second birthday? <laughs> well, I didn't have a twenty first birthday party. Um, see, okay. Mm. I want to talk about this one in the middle here, though. Okay, go on. Right, I want to talk about getting to Australia. Well, the invitation comes because I won the award for the Caribbean and um, Canada. It comes and it, the, 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 the ticket comes and everything, all I thought I had to do was get onto the plane. Well, I got onto the plane and the plane took me to California where I thought I was just not going to step on a plane to um, the part of Australia I was going to. But it didn't work like that because I thought that Jamaica was part of the Commonwealth and so was Australia. And so it was easy stepping on a plane but when I gave my, my details to the lady at the desk, she said, no. And I said, no, you are wrong. And she said, OK, I'll go check. But she checked and came back and told me that she's right. So there I am, stranded in California. And not knowing really what to do. But the Lord comes and does things. There was a young lady from um, the University of California who had come and spent some days with me in Woodside. And for some reason, I remembered her telephone number right off. So I took out my, 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 my paper money, managed to put it into those places that you push your money into to, 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 to make a phone call, called her and that was her number. And she came and took me to the embassy, to the Australian embassy where I got a visa and um, that is how I managed to get to Australia. I was not the only Commonwealth person who was mistaken because the girl from, from um, she's very popular now, the girl from um, Zimbabwe was also held up in Germany and couldn't come over. She eventually got to come over because the same thing, she thought that they were part of the, um, mm. were part of the she was part of the Commonwealth and mm. it was easy moving. Well, we had, a, we, had, we had it in our face, it was thrown in our face 
that we were not, we might be part of the Commonwealth, but we were not very, we were, we were not brothers and sisters. Okay. Yeah. There is that. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thanks for that. That kind of links to a lot of things which we are experiencing now with the whole Windrush, what we're happening here with the Windrush, where we think we're part of the Commonwealth or we think we are, <laughs> the Windrush people thought that they were British. Um, this is, this is just such a big <laughs> um, story about. It is ludicrous. It is ludicrous what we it's think. Ludicrous about, inclusion know. and exclusion <laughs> selectively. Right, right, right. So where are we here? No, this one I like. Though. This is um, this is um, you know near to the University of Sussex is in um in a place that people talk about this great beach that is in England, Brighton. Brighton Beach, there we are, mm -hmm. with our umbrellas on Brighton Beach, fully clothed. <laughs> yeah. I am, I am, I am at one corner there, and there are two, fel a fellow and a girl, they're Nigerians, mm -hmm. and we're there sitting on Brighton Beach, yes. Okay, so, and they were both from, they're from the university as well? They were both at, uh, I think they were both at, yes, they were both at the university. Mm -hmm. And the other picture, which is a bit... This one here, uh, unfortunately, I can't remember the names of these people, but this was in Germany. Oh, right. Germany, yes. where I went to do a paper. But I'd like to tell you a little bit about this Germany business here. Okay. I nearly missed that plane. I nearly missed that plane. Not just for my fault. The girl who was taking me to the airport was late, but I could have been up and, 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 and walking around and worrying. On but what has happening now is that I thought I was home because you know these Germans are blah, blah, blah. and my neighbor in Jamaica was a great bad word man. You know bad words, you know bad words, man. And many of the bad words he spoke when so I thought I was home listening to him cursing. So I just turned over and said, Well, I'm home. There's no until the girl came and I had to get get up and put on my clothes and we had to rush to get to the plane. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I know exactly what you mean. Um, uh, okay. I can't say these bad words for you. No, no. Uh -uh. I, I call these groundings because I have no idea where, what, who um, these are. But obviously I can see you. Okay. At the left are the ties. The ties, no um, longer school girls, but both of us grandmothers and all like that. There we oh, are. Wow, wow. The ties again. Uh -huh. Great. Yes. Okay. And the other one? This is the one in the middle now. This is at a fam the family gathering. And somebody has brought some photographs of me and I'm looking at them and saying how beautiful I am. And the chorus, <laughs> my sister and her, my sister and her daughter and um, her her, her, her husband's niece are there telling me how beautiful I am, which I did know. Confirm Look at my beautiful hair, yeah. just beginning to get gray. Yeah, mm. yes, beautiful. Okay, this was something that just to show you that, you know, when, I'm, when I was, I did a presentation to the Pan-African Society Community Forum um, mm -hmm. on work on you, uh, I think it was 2017 maybe, um, and I used this. Um, mm -hmm. you were having uh, um, you were having a discussion here with um, Nadia Ellis Russell mm -hmm. and, um, <clears throat> I was quite interested in this quotation um, that you speak about you know the they the, you know the others can build the material world but let us spend some time working on the spiritual which brings us to this next phase and talking about the spiritual influence and impact on I you. didn't even know that I was saying this at that time well yes you were one mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> Um, and this is here another um, quotation um, where you were talking about when you come when you came back. We just saw the fro that painful. Was yes, and um, you put it around with your natural hair, but you've been donning that like proudly for. Have you have you always had your hair in that in that kind of natural way, um, or did you come when you went abroad? Oh, for a very, very long time. The, the straightening was in high school, not, not, not always, because straightening meant men going to hairdresser and having to pay for it. And paying was not a thing that was very strong in my, in my pocket. So mm -hmm. I, I, I wore my hair wherever I could wear my hair, plaited and all the rest of it. But on, on occasions, like, like when I'm standing up in that blue dress there, I went and got my hair done. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. But mostly my hair was natural. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The um the next bit here is um will take us into your your work and your writing, um which is what you're saying here in that in this conversation about enjoying writing the way you write it's not reaching the common people the common man. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. is that is that still this this the case? Um, you feel mm -hmm. um this is why I try to do it you know via the community and independently and stuff like that because it a lot of your work obviously is locked into academia would you say that's, mm -hmm. that's still the case i think that is the case i don't think you'll find me on the um on the sexy um the sexy agenda no 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 so it still is like that mm. it still is like that okay even i mean obviously something like jane and louisa uh, the content um yeah, might throw them uh, as well because I have the same. I have would have the same with Elijah, my first novel, which has it. You know, themes of sexual. You know, themes of a sexual nature. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's interesting how they don't want to engage with that. But obviously, the other works, which are um, like Myelism and Louisiana, and dealing with the the, the form, mm -hmm. um, you have to have the people who are willing to push it some somehow um it's yes, a, yes. The case. but what 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 one of the things that i have done which has pleased me very much is to do um something for what we called a, a, a re-adaptment having done the history of the village and knowing the the lack of reading ability, because I really did have a reading circle, but we never gave a get very far far than the preface because most of us couldn't read anyhow. Um, I did the history of the village and the issue now was how to get the material to the village. And the materials got to the village through a kind of play in which I used the people whose names were on the 1817 register of slaves. And we pretended that it was 1838 and the Emancipation Proclamation was being read and we marched up and listened and made comments. Comments, some of which were really spot on. I never forget how the people treated um, those, those, those seven years that most of us had, to, four or seven years after the Emancipation Declaration was and we had this, the, the word just escapes me right now, but there were these four Apprenticeships, years. apprenticeship. Uh, we have actually got a clip of that, um, Sister Erna. I've got a clip. I found a clip of it. Mm -hmm. Actually brought tears to my eyes of one of the reenactment uh, of emancipation um, to enable the, the, the community to, to hear, hear that. So I've got a clip. So if we will get to that um, soon, but um, here is you, um, at this Commonwealth Prize that you were mentioning before in Australia. Okay, okay. All right, I'm going to mention this and it's the first time I mention it and it's, I hope it's the last. When I went to the hotel where the prize business was being done, the, the person who was ahead of the group told me uh, more or less that I wasn't going to get the prize. Uh, he told me a story about um, the person who actually was given the prize that she was in the mental hospital and he felt that if she was made to win the prize, it would help her, it would be good therapy for her. So she got the prize. Okay. Uh, I'm ducking my head down. Also know, huh? Sorry. But I also know that if she weren't there, I would have got it because a group of African writers came by um, and said, well, we know you're getting it. We know you're getting it. Everybody knows you're getting it. And um, so I only mention it because it is part of life. But I haven't seen her book anywhere, but Maya is everywhere. So we say that and forget it, okay? Now I want you to move on to this lady at the right. <laughs> Sorry. Is she beautiful? Where, right? where, where? On my right. Okay, okay. What a beauty. Mm. And the hair is looking so good, not like it is now. The hair is looking so good. 
Don't you see her? <laughs> it's okay, here. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I think that is my finest photo. Oh, it's, yes. it's funny when you can look at yourself and declare such a thing like that one. Yeah, but there are so many. Yes, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that 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 is beautiful. This over here, you know, in the, on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. I don't know why my neck is leaning, except that <laughs> my mother, like your mom, like your mom. My this mom. is the, this is how I met you. It was a, a my neck lean. Like um, the kind of the lean um, coy look on the cover of. Um, I don't know if this one is on the cover of Mile, but it was. It's a similar. No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I don't think it There's is. another one. Okay, here we move on to more awards and conferments and things. Uh huh. This you you recognize um, Eddie Ball? Well, Eddie I recognize that you told me for a long, long time. Well, I'm with Eddie Ball there, who is congratulating me on getting a Musgrave Gold, and um, there is everybody knows her, so I don't know why am I. No, people might not know that this is um, Sister Lorna Goodison. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And there's my neck lean again. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't notice it, but then you, you, I was thinking such a, you look so like, just, just sweet. Yeah. My niece does this lean and I have a similar lean as well. Okay. I have problems with my neck now, as a matter of fact, it is called, what is it, what is the word? No. Uh, arthritis. I have an arthritic neck. The doctors oh, tell me. Yeah, I don't know. I'm know. leaning it all this way all the time. But anyhow, there it is. And here, uh, over, uh, over here, is 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 the Governor General um, putting the, the 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 thing that makes me a uh, CD. What does CD stand for again? Um, commander. Commander. Of, yeah, Commander class. Commander class. Com uh -huh, commander class. Commander of Distinction, yes. See and me. this is in Jamaica. This is in Jamaica, yes. Okay. I'm just hoping that the audience is recognizing, I'm not, we're going through it orga organically. Um, Sister Erna is receiving, she's written, a, you know, com compiled a body of work, which in my estimation is just phenomenal. And, you know, over a passage of time, she's receiving these amazing awards as well for them. Here is another sister. Uh, no. Let me advise you that it's raining very hard here. Okay. And so I'm going to be shooting. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've had the rains, um, but they've kind of ceased at the moment. Yeah, it's okay. All right, you can hear me? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you want to know what this one is? Yep. Yeah. This one is the Dutch, I don't know why, of the Netherlands have taken it upon themselves to give me an, an award for my writing and my community work. They're called, um, what do they call them again? There's a, thing, a word, a word, word. What do they call it when you get the, um, I don't know, anyhow, let's pass. It was an award whose name I forget. Well, it says Prince Klaus, it's not the Prince Klaus award here, is it? Oh, what? Prince Klaus, Prince Klaus. Right. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Prince Klaus award. Um, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so they're giving that to you because um, academics, um, you know, are recognized work because somebody has to, to to put that forward, right? Uh, yes, somebody, somebody did put it forward. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we need to to, to understand that. And this had to the, to the Caribbean. Since then, is it is it is it is like um, like nothing now. But it was the first in the Caribbean at the time. All oh, right. Okay. Um, the, I was just saying that this photo here is the one I'm I'm familiar with. I, I one on, on the back of Jane. It was on the back of Jane. And Miles was it on Miles as well? I don't know, but I know that this was done by. Uh, this picture was taken to the net again. This next yes. picture was in England. I forget the name of the young man who who was a photographer to New Beacon. Okay. Okay, maybe Michael will let us know if he's on here. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, is now 2017, because I think when I did the presentation on you, you had just won this award. Um, and then you were invited to the Bocas Lit Festival, where you mm -hmm. were in. Oh, this, this was what you're talking about, is the Wyndham Campbell Award. Right, and yes. I'm still living. 
<laughs> you're still living, which is great. Can we listen to a bit of you here? Um, and this interview with, I don't know, I can't remember what this, uh, the sister's name is here, but this is at the Bocas Lit Festival in 2018. Let's have a listen. Mm -hmm. Start by referring to a story that I had never read before. It's called The Baby Father, published in Kuna Pipi in 20, 2012. And it's told entirely from the perspective of a young man, a selfish fellow who changes after being confronted by the child he fathered but never knew. Which reminded me once again that Erna is part, Erna is one of not, that Erna is one of not many women writers who feature male characters in their work in a positive way. Men are very much a part of all your novels, I think. And they play a, f one male character pay figure pays, plays a crucial role in the lives of all your fictional women. There's Baba for Nelly in Jane and Louise Will Soon Come Home, Ma Cyrus for Ella in Mile, several others for the title character in Louisiana and The Rainmaker's Mistake. Now in Nothing's Matt, Everard and Modibe are more tangential, but still they form part of the fractal structure of the text. And so I'd like to ask you to say something about this commitment to representing men in your literary and non-literary work, because I'm thinking here of the second generation of free men in Jamaica, 1907 to 1944. Well, one of the things I try to do in my work, you know, I'm coming out of social science, is to get to what I would like to call the truth. And um, if we are to deal with the truth, and the truth I, I've always hoped that will help us to go into applied work, then we have to have men and women, because that is how it is. There are men and there are women. But that is that, is, that apart, which is a sort of intellectual thing. I had a very great childhood. Much of it depends on the fact that I had a marvelous father. And I could not think of writing without giving, paying respect to my father. I also have three brothers who are, came after me and who I had to take care of. So there is no way that the black man, the Jamaican man, would not be stamped on my, on my thinking. There is no way I could not deal with them because I love them. They're part of me and I know they're part of life. Absolutely. Um, I want to talk now about the very prestigious and very generous Wyndham Campbell Prize for Fiction that you won. And I'm, am I right? The first, well, with, with Andre, the first Caribbean writers to win this since it was, since it was begun in 2013. And Lorna Goodison this year, obviously we're all thrilled and saying, finally, a Caribbean writer has made it onto the Wyndham Campbell list. But gossip now. How has this impacted on your life? <laughs> well, I have no hesitation in telling you that, telling you little things like this, which you understand, that things were so thin that I was borrowing money from my five-year-old grandson <laughs> and couldn't pay him the $7,000 that I owed him. Oh, Thanks to William Campbell, as soon as I got it, my grandson Anton got his money. Okay. And I would like to tell you, thank you, Michael, and anybody else who had anything to do with it, that when I get in my car now to go and do a particular work, I and I don't think about whether I can afford the gas. I just drive <laughs> up and say. <laughs> I know, I finished it. It's actually like a long, um, not so long, but it's, um, it's worth watching this, um, this uh, clip, actually. Um, with um, Sister Erna telling us about her win of and how she used <laughs> the um, the prize money um, for uh, from the Wyndham Campbell. Uh, do you want to mention anything? About Start by that, um, referring to a story that I um, had never read Sister before. Sister Erna, it's called. 
apart from this, can you read that? I'm saying that when you got the call, this is this is your words in a, in a, in a in a uh, an article. You said the telephone call and later the representation on paper of miracle was so frighteningly frighteningly surreal. I'm still wondering if it have been I've been trapped in a composition of mine. <laughs> this is what you yes, said. Yes, 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 yes. But what yes, was yes. what what I thought was was interesting is like you describing your composition as frighteningly sur surreal. <laughs> We're the ones that have to <laughs> to read. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to make I our understand, way in I that. Understand that. I understand that. I understand that. I was yeah. wondering if a Louisiana thing had happened to me, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's that would be interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Thinking of and talking about Louisiana. Um, this is um, from the opening of Louisiana. This is just to show you again that I use these for my um, presentation and for the work. Um, and this is just pointing to the potential of when you're winning these kinds of awards, um, what we can do, what the, the funds allow us to do, um, which you're, but this is from the book. This is from Louisiana in the opening pages. Um, and so um, this is obviously fictional, <laughs> but um, how, else do you utilize when you have these awards how else do you make use of these um in terms of community work um do you want to speak a little bit about that oh uh, the community work um well when the university of the west Indies and i parted company we parted company mainly because well we weren't we weren't singing the same tune we weren't using the same hymn sheet Mm -hmm. I wanted to go out and be involved with change and they wanted seminars and papers and all the rest of it. And they didn't know anybody. Far, 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 far from them. You know what I mean by Mars John, the, 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 the man in the, in the village. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy to go home to, uh, to Woodside uh, where my father built me a little 16 by 12 thing. Mm -hmm. And I lived in it for some time until money came and I kept adding. I mentioned the house going so, mm -hmm. getting so big that it might reach the, 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 the gate one day. But mm -hmm. I just pulled on, put on, put on, put on, put on as the money came and as the need arose. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I tell you this, this, this thing here, but I still carried with me down into the country part, the sense of, um, of the academic. I was writing, I don't know what I was writing at the time, but I had built my house in such a way that th there was no door to the, to, to the village. Um, and so people didn't have to bother me and I didn't have to be bothered by people. And I was there typing away when I heard this big old noise like the, the, like the, um, the, the rape of the, of the, what's the name of these women in, in, in the Latin thing? The rape of the whole of these women, whole village of these women, were carried off to Rome. And I, 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 you know what I did? I picked up my computer and went into the middle of my house. And the next day, the lady was helping me. Came and said, "Do you know that they killed um, Junior, whatever the fellow's name was? I forget now." And I felt so ashamed that my neighbor was killed, and all I could do was lift up my typewriter and move into the inner sanctum of my house. So this was when I knew that I had to, and I had I had studied, um, been involved with social psychiatry in the US on a fellowship there, and realized that all of us are mad, me included, that this can happen right before our eyes. You know, just, just have people from one village come, take up a fellow, beat him up and carry him up to their village and kill him. And, and we just, all we could do was report, report on it. So I, I, I made myself available to the youth club. I told them that all I had was what was in my head. If they wanted it, they could get it. And they wanted it. So I worked along with the youth club, um, reading stuff about ourselves, focusing on ourselves. And um, it was beautiful to have my colleagues from the university coming down, driving all of that rough road, coming down to help. To, 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 to give people information, knowledge about themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, one I always mentioned, Swithin Wilmot. Swithin Wilmot came to give a talk. It was my father's uh, memorial to my father. And he came to give a talk and he talked about the parish that I live in is St. Mary. 
he talked about St. Mary and um, voting rights and how many people voted in St. Mary. And there were people who just sat there and just stared and just listened. I remember two old women whom I had got somebody to take them from three miles away. And the person was ready to go home and said, well, they have to come now. And they said, no, 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 they prefer to walk because when their history is being said, they can't move. And I kept on asking, why weren't we told these things in school? Imagine um, you reading a history book or hearing history and knowing the person that the, that the historian is talking about. That had never, ever done that. But on most of us, the history that we knew didn't have anything to do with us at all. Mm. So um, I picked up from that. And that is how come I went and wrote, you probably know, the University of the West Indies did that. Woodside Patriot Grove, that's the, that's the history of my village. Okay. Mm. And um, mm. it was not just or it was not just archival sources, it was oral sources and the people in the village. And they were so involved that, you know, somebody would send to say, I know you want to know this. Come, uh, I know who used to live right here. So I know who this land belonged to. So the people there was the, there was what is now called the um, well, the underbelly, the archives, that kind of archives was there that was mm. there and willing to be used. Then I could take some of the youths with me to um, the, arch the actual uh, archives, the Jamaica archives, and to see people's eyes open when they see something that was written in, 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 um, in, 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 in 1680, was, was delight to my heart. Here was mm -hmm. I showing people that there was a past. And the next thing was that I was showing them how they were in that past. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. okay. So this, yeah. was the, this was what my community work was about of mm. giving people knowledge and helping people to get to the knowledge. That was mm. my community work, which was um, fostered by the fact of the, a village coming in and killing this child. And I was mm. hoping that when we knew more about each other, we'd be closer to each other and we would be able to withstand that kind of evil. We could, I mean, of course, the fellow who was killed was a thief. We all knew him to be a thief. Tony was a thief. Everybody knew that Tony was our thief, but we never tried to kill him. But I suppose we never tried to make him anything else but a thief. Well, I was also hoping that when we got together and read our history and all the rest of this and began, were, were, were friendly with each other, we would be able to stop this kind of thing from happening. So mm. community work and the knowledge of history were the things I was using. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if it works everywhere else or anywhere else or to the extent to which it is working now, but it did very much work in those days when I started use, yeah. using those two tools. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, no, that's, that's really um, interesting, um, Sister Erna, because I do wonder about that. One of the questions I have, I mean, I have questions that I haven't even really asked, asked you um, at all yet, but it was about being able to create communities wherever you are, um, because obviously you're back in Jamaica. And so mm -hmm. there, yes, you were doing the academic thing and in head for a hot minute, but then you realize, you know, you need to, to expand and actually go into the, to the community uh, itself. But for a lot of us who are, you know, sort of outside of our sort of, um, like myself, I was born in, in Diana and others who were born in the UK, I was trying to think about how we do community here. I mean, we try to do community here, but I wonder how far we get to do it as well as we we can. Um, being in a in a in a dominant white um, um, system and um, society, I just wonder how well far far we can do it here. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. If if community is something that you can just make organic and be where you decide it is or whether you know it's it's it, it comes out of the place that you know very well you're part of well let me look at the other side of what i have been doing and what i have almost withdrawn the time has come for another model um the the, the people who were rejoicing about the knowledge it just happens that as soon as you get somebody who really and truthfully is onto the thing and wants to work with it and wants to move with you, the person gets up and leaves. One of my most important ones just left with a lie, went to England and hasn't been able to come home. Mm. You know, okay, mm -hmm. they move because um, the thing to do really when you live in a rural area is to move, is to leave. So I, I haven't found the way of of um, working with these shimmering 
shimmering uh, waters, you know, that are just moving, 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 moving. Mm -hmm. Though they do write to me, so I suppose, suppose that is something that they keep in contact. Okay. Mm. So you're talking yeah. about finding finding people that are um, your your corpus, the people that you can you can work with that you know wherever they are. But obviously, when people get to a particular point, they want to move away. They want to move away. Uh -huh. They think is, what you what yeah. what we're hoping for now is that the movement will come the other way. That the movement they will start. They have gone out and they have seen this and I've seen that, but they will start moving back in. A little bit of that is happening, and if not the same people. Some of the same people are moving back in, and mm -hmm. others, others who strangers are moving in as well. So right. something is happening, and some of those strangers moving in tell me that the reason that they came, chose to buy land there, is because of what they have seen on television about the village. Right, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a, there's a slide that's on the screen that I'm just going to whisk whisk through because I kind of had this kind of grand. Uh, thought with it which is which is connected to what you were saying anyway about you know the kind of instead of urging ourselves along with this whole creole or creolization or creolized um, removed um, sense of an identity we as African people need to feel rooted in the African nest or perhaps like you're saying return to a sense of that um, and get that grounding um, mm -hmm. So this is what this this slide is on, on here to do with mm -hmm. Sankofa to mm -hmm. go forward into this new self. I don't really want to say anything because I want to move along um, mm -hmm. with it um, to show that in terms of your work as well, how I perceive a lot of your work and how I know others do is there are all these different labels <laughs> um, for them, which is what literary criticism would be all about. Um, mm. I recently taught Afro, a, a, a course on Afrofuturism and I use Louisiana mm -hmm. for it because you have the tape recorder that you use, the tape recorder being the, the scientific uh, means of spiritual communication. Um, so, um, so this is um, this is just showing you how I use your work, in other words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I use your work to show that uh, people who, in this quotation here that people can see on the, um, the screen, uh, people who have been bereft of a sense of identity, the sense of uh, the, the idea of Afrofuturism, and has, as featured in your work, which is to do with that future and past continuum, African traditional spirituality and practices, um, the, the way we produce and transmit knowledge, um, whether that's linked to resistance and struggle, all of these, understanding these, give us a way to move forward and to evolve um, a kind of future. And, um, and I use here that, um, I link that to Garveyism and Garveyism mm -hmm. trying to enable us to find that sense of identity and, um, you know, the immortal Garvey, the fact that that identity is not dead um, and um, because the, the transmission, the spiritual, that what you call actually the hegemony of spirit mm -hmm. is, is um, kind of enshrined in our um, Africanicity, our, our African selves. Um, so yeah, so I was just tr trying to show you, you know, just quickly um, some of the ways I use your work, but I just wanted here um, quickly just to get a sense of your, 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 um, I don't want to look at a lot of this, but this is when you received the, this is the book launch for um, Nothing's Mad. Nothing's Mad. I'm, I'm just going to play a little bit of this clip because I think it's your personality that I, I, I really love as well that comes <laughs> Well, am I to say wagwan or just greetings? Well, greetings massive. Thank you, Michael, for the good things you have said. About four years ago, I came to a launch. Let me just say this is part one of four points I want to make. And I hope I make them without boring you too much. About four years ago, I came to a launch like this, but hosted only by the Department of Literature and English. Rosina Moda and company performed. I told those around me, and of course myself, 
that I was going to write a piece which the Department of Literature in English would want to launch, and at which they would invite Rosina Moda to perform. Well, hopes realize. Thank you very much, Rosina, and thank all those people who were responsible for inviting Rosina to help me to have my hopes realized. I mean, um, Sister Erna, the fact that you, even that, even just you, you the confidence to, to be like, yeah, I'm writing this piece, which is called Nothing's Map, which is your last publication. Uh, and you've come to this launch and you're then saying, in, in whichever time the University of the West Indies is going to publish this book, it's going to be launched here, and I'm going to have um, I'm going to have uh, Rosina, is it? Perform. Yes, Rosina Moda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That in itself is just brilliant because it links to um, another sister who um, Octavia Butler, who talks about projecting, you know, realizing um, what she wants to to manifest through spirit. So I just love that. I mean, I could this again, I urge people to go and have a look um, at. Do you want to say anything about this um this this um moment? Uh this mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I didn't even remember this moment. Okay. Okay. And then this uh, is about the black space. I didn't know who this uh what this gent who this gentleman uh is. And this gentleman is, is the uh, paramount chief for a part of Ghana. Yes. Okay. And he was visiting us in Woodside. Okay. Okay. Uh, he came to 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 Jamaica, and um, somebody felt that he shouldn't leave without seeing Woodside. And I could tell you, um, we had um, I had published something called the People of My Jamaican Village, which was just the names of people who were enslaved here and where they had come from, and um, he wanted to we wanted to take him down to where this list was was on a on stones that these children had made and his 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 the people who carried took him and were in charge of him said no 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 he can't go down there he's 70 he can't go down there and the man just pulled himself away from them and went down there and um told us when they looked he said you have using the wrong name this is an african name but you have written it in english and um he just he just bowled us over with the way in which he was involved and was happy to be involved with the with the efforts we were making to reach our African selves. Okay. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And this is just about uh, about creating black space. Let's just listen to you a minute. Yes, that it is time that we realized that a lot of what we knew, a lot of what we were involved in was white space. And that if we really wanted to stand up, we would have to create a black space. So, um, so what is happening now is the creating of the black space. Moreover, we also had to recognize that a lot of what we knew, even about ourselves, we knew from the perspective of white people who went somewhere and researched us. And it was time for us to talk to each other to find out in that way what we are about. So black space was was um, the notion that we have to build a black space, a black place for ourselves, as also the notion that we have to have a place where we can talk to each other and find out for ourselves about each other. So those are the two major things. And it was to be a private space because um, we needed a private space so we could talk our truths. Because so often, whatever we knew about ourselves was coming from white people. And whenever we tried to meet, to do anything, was always, master was always looking. So now that we are free, we need to have a place of our own so where we can talk about truth, we can relax, we can um, curse each other if we want to curse each other. That's so, um, Sister Ernest, Black Space is still operative, it's still going, or is it, um, it just is? Black Space uh, meets on the 29th and the 30th of July, the day before the, um, the day before, the day before emancipation. Oh, okay. And, and we normally flow into the emancipation exercises in the village. Black Space is alive. We didn't have a much last year because of COVID. But this year, we just managed to squeeze through before, before the, the headmaster, the um, prime minister, lick another set of um, don'ts on us. 
No. Black space was the most beautiful that I have had um, for all the years we have had black space. The right people were there and the people were spirit people. They were spirit people. Uh, you probably know um, it was about the spirit. Yeah. Um, it was about the spirit, getting to the theory, a critical theory of the spirit. And how did we come at that? There was a paper that was written um, on Mayal, but it wasn't just Mayal because the person talked as well about um, Latin America and writers, that there is a spirit that inside of it, it is talk, our works talk about the spirit and you have to know about the spirit before you can understand fully what these people, what we're, what we're saying, which I agree with. And um, so we got together this time to see if we could work towards getting the critical theory of the spirit. And we worked very hard and very beautifully. And um, I think we'll reach there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we look forward to it. This is about the annual emancipation ritual that you do, uh, mm -hmm. good side. Uh, yes. And you were say, ex explaining that you didn't quite get to do it this year because of um, the restrictions, but um, yes, okay. yeah, this, this is something that you initiated. How long yes. ago now? Well, um, it was in 1999 that we had the first big one. Yeah. I was I, I, in the field, I'd gone to study um, these people who we called old at the time, people were born around about 1900, between 1900 and 1907, who would be the second generation of people who were born free. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know how they did things, what they felt about and all the rest of it, so that we could see whether what we were seeing in um, our social work practice, what we could see, whether this was happening long ago. And if it's happening long ago and we didn't like it, then it means that we'd have to make special efforts to, to get rid of it because it was traditional. So this is the kind of thing that sent me into the field. Um, my, my, um, my, my, my people were paying me and the university were very kind and allowed me to go and do. For three years, I was in the field doing this. And one of the things that people said, accusing me, looking at me and hearing I'm coming from the university, accusing me of being one of those who took away the emancipation celebrations from them. Because in 1960, to when Jamaica got independence, they decided that what was most important was for us to see ourselves as out of many one people, though 90% of the people are black and are African. So um, they, 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 they crossed emancipation celebrations out of the program altogether. They were no longer, it was no longer um, their, their, their fathers would put on their white suits and just sit quietly on the veranda in reverence to what had, what had happened, that they were now free. Um, it was just painful to hear, to hear them talk about what we had done to their culture, what we mm. had done to them. So I, when I came back came off the field, I uh, started in my own yard. I started with children, teaching them about the kidnap. I mean, they're going through all of it as a game, the kidnap, the, um, the standing up and being bid, 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 bid for as, as cattle, um, the, the hard work that we had to do, and then all freeing ourselves. So it happened in my yard first. And then in 1999, the government decided to, I mean, I'd been asked great deal of money. I did it for $30,000 and I thought that was the biggest money I'd ever earned. Um, I was asked to, to review the, um, cultural development program. And I put in it that they had to take back, give back the people emancipation. So in 1999, the government heard me and uh, put emancipation back into the program of, of special days. Mm -hmm. So um, the community came together with me and we moved it out of my yard and we moved it into the community spaces now. And there were a number of things that we were doing. Firstly, we went back to, we went to Daddy Rock. Daddy Rock, I mean, is now quite a thing, but Daddy Rock is a place where we were told that the ancestors went to 
do their private thinking. And we assumed that on the 31st of August, 31st of July in 1838, they would have come to that spot. So we went back to that spot to think about our own business. So we would normally have a lecturer who would talk about what's happening to us and we would have, we would talk about that and then we'd break into groups and, and talk about that and come back and have some um, general statements to make. So that was, that was the 31st of July. And the night of that, now is my time because that is when the drums start, you know, that is when the drums beat. And we have the vigil and we sit up until, until uh, we dance until the 1st of August. And on the 1st of August, we go up to a mountain where the literature tells us, the, the, the records tell us, and, the, and also the um, oral reports tell us the um, enslaved people had built their own church. So we go up there, we don't have any program, but it's, it's a spirit, spirit led. Anybody who feels like talking, talk and so like that and then we come back down and have um, some breakfast together and then we have this play called uh, uh, emancipation ritual which i made out of the history of the village and mm -hmm. people talk sometimes it backfires like say somebody speaking on behalf of lee some fellow who's whose grandfather might have been lee comes up to say something in the voice of Lee. And then there are Lees all out, out in the, um, out in in the, the audience. audience. And some of these Lees just walk up as if it's the, you know, they, they, there's nothing called drama for them. <laughs> they come up, you know, so, so yeah. it sometimes it backfires, but not all the time, very rarely oh. does it backfire. So we have this, and then after we've had this play, we march around, there were five, five important coffee estates. We walk around this coffee estate, marching and and like you know, like like um, like those people who was it, it was Joshua, and the horns, mm -hmm. marching down the slavery. So we walk around for about five miles and come back to the community center where we have a communal meal. And everybody understands that there was no money floating around to buy no rice and peas and chicken. So um, the meal is made up of whatever people bring. So we have this communal meal. And that was it. That was the ritual for emancipation. Can we just listen to a tiny little bit and then we finish and then we'll have the Q&A because obviously I know that there's imminence of time, but you know, I'm so pleased that every, the system is all working and I'm just like, you know, just listen to this. So they because it goes on a little bit more but the whole point is that they're doing that reenactment of the ritual and there are actually two parts to this um the it, it will he will then they will read the proclamation and um they'll have a, a pastor who reads the proclamation and says 
you what's happening now is that um, you know we've got freedom but when I saw this I actually came across this um earlier it literally brought tears to my eye sister Erna because mm -hmm. a similar thing in Guyana in Hope Town um on the 31st um which is kind of losing it's quite big it's a big thing in Guyana um in Hope Town village uh, not far from where my mum came from in Guyana. Um, and then obviously we'll have Emancipation Day on the 1st. But that the fact that you do this enactment is just beautiful. I wanted to finish there. And there are more slides I have, but I want to stop. And then I want to tell you something about, I want okay. to tell you many things. <laughs> One of these things is that this, 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 this enactment this year is all used, it's all used, all used. Yes. And they turn it to suit themselves. Some of what Tony is saying is coming out of his, his mouth and his understanding because we do the, the, the summer school of history before we go into um, the place. So they can pick up because they know the history. But the other thing I want to tell you is that um, one year, people from outside usually come and read the Emancipation Proclamation. This year, this fellow who used to come all the time, he was the reader and um, he waited until there's a part of the play in which a woman talks about what they did around the, um, on the boat and how she came to Jamaica pregnant. And um, he collapsed. And I, I was asking him, what is the problem? And he says, you get me this time, you get me this time. I couldn't deal with it this time um, because that is the story of his own family. And it comes down in his family that there was never forget what happened to her, their, their ancestor on the boat. I thought I didn't believe him, you know, but I went behind his back and I asked members of his family, whether they said, yes, 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 it is part of our family tradition. So the thing has a therapeutic value as well, you know, I was really, really, very, very moved at his collapsing. I, I mean, and, and then being able to be built up again, mm. having seen, seen in the flesh. What happened to his ancestor? Ancestors. Oh wow! Oh wow! That is um, beautiful um, to hear. That um, so moving. I, as I said, I was very much moved um, when I started watching this earlier. But um, Sister Erna, I'm going to thank you so much for this part. Um, we're going to have a little. We can be quiet. You can take the do do it normal, normal. We are we're all right with with hearing you and everything. And then I'll I'll pass back over to Tony. I do have some more bits, but we could intersperse that when we're having the Q and A because we still got some time. You know, we've got, I'm not letting you go. <laughs> okay, Tony, thank you. Yeah, Michelle, we can go straight to Q and A because we got a couple of questions already, and people are keen to speak to Sister. Directly. So there's a question from Kwame, it says here, greetings from Los Angeles, USA. I'm African-American. I'm obsessed with African and African diaspora relations. Can you say something about your experiences in Louisiana or researching about Louisiana and your thoughts on Jamaican African-American relations generally? That's from Kwame. Over to you, Michelle. Oh, sorry, Dr. Pardon me. I didn't hear much of that because... Um... The noise from the rain and these, I'm not so accustomed to these earplugs here. So right, I'll, repeat, I'll repeat it. Yes, Greetings repeat from it. Los Angeles, America. I'm African American. I'm obsessed yes. with African and the African diaspora. Can you say something about your experiences in Louisiana or researching about Louisiana and your thoughts on Jamaican African American relations generally? Am I to talk now? Uh, yes, I'm Sister Anna. Did you hear I'm it all right that time? Yes, please. Are my experiences in Louisiana. Well, I did go to Louisiana. I, uh, my, my experience is real. I did not read it in books. I went to Louisiana and I went into the part of Louisiana, which looks like the Caribbean, the cane, where they grow cane and so on. And I spent some days and, in Louisiana. I really have to tell you this, that my cousin, I have a cousin in Louisiana, and she was to make the arrangements. Well, the arrangement she made was with a nun, a nunnery. So we went into this nunnery and the sister asked, so, so where are you, what, 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 what is your unit? She assumed that we were, we were nuns from somewhere. And I had to tell her sister, we're not even Roman Catholics. And she said, oh my God, what am I going to tell father? 
as a sister, you will tell father the truth and that will carry you through. Well, when father came, I told him, father was quite pleased. He just invited us to church, that's all. Mm -hmm. So um, that was part of my, my, um, my Louisiana. But I say I was there and I experienced the heat that I talk about there, Louisiana. So um, um, I didn't get in much of the jazz that one knows about in Louisiana. I guess I'll have to go back for the music of Louisiana. Okay, I didn't get as much as I would have liked to. So I hope that answers the question about Louisiana as, 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 as honestly as I can, that I went to Louisiana for about, I went to Louisiana for about 10 days, stayed in New Orleans with family, you're not seeing anything, and, and then went into the country parts into this Roman Catholic place where we stayed for a couple of days. Okay. That's my experience of Louisiana and the heat of Louisiana is something else. More often than not, my glasses were clouded over and I couldn't see anything, but um, there it is. Mm. No, this one, no, the Jamaica African-American thing is up right up my street because my most recent work is called um, African-American, African-Caribbean relations, African-Jamaican relations. So um, I have been on this business for the longest while. I'll tell you why I've been on this business. In um, 1967, which is a far time away, I had spent a year in the US where I was privileged to meet African-Americans and to meet um, Africans in a group. We were in a group. I was Caribbean. They were Africans and they were African-Americans. And a brethren, well, you know, 67 was Black Power and, and, and burning down Detroit and all the rest of it was very, very active. And um, as much as they were burning, they were being shot and all like that. We, we were being shot. It was a, it was a traumatic time. And an and African-American youth said to me, sister, they don't ask you to talk before they shoot, you know. And that changed my life totally. As much as I was changed by the people in the field in, in the 70s, I was changed by that. Because I realized now that I was not Caribbean. I was black and I was part of Africa and I was part of African America. And um, I wanted to explore and to encourage that relationship. A lot of work had been being done in, in, in the university on the connection with Africa. But for some reason, African America, I, I still can't figure it out. I can't figure how somebody can be doing studies of the family, the black family, and not study African America. I have never been able to do that. But a lot of a lot of the work on the black family was done by anthropologists, British anthropologists, who had no interest at all in, in, in America. It's just recently that R.T. Smith, one of the anthropologists who did quite a bit of work on the family, um, is now saying that it is very necessary to look at African America. Okay. So um, I have known and continue to know after that, that fellow spoke to me that I am part of African America and African-American really arrangement has to be studied. Marcus Garvey did a lot, but Marcus Garvey could not do it alone. Marcus Garvey went there and found African-American doing their thing. And we need to know the thing that African-American was doing. And it is what my most recent book is about. Also, the relationships have been there shortly after emancipation, African-Americans came over and African-Americans have been lacking um, in some parts of the US. African-Americans have been celebrating the 1st of August for years and years and years and years. And um, so the connection is not just one-sided. African-Americans have been relating to Jamaica and Jamaicans have been relating to African-America. One of the problems is that somehow or other, Jamaicans come, you see it in Louisiana, Jamaicans come to African-America and believe that somehow there's smarter, they're brighter, they're better than African-Americans. And that is something that has to stop, really has to stop, really has to stop. I'm telling this person from California, it really has to stop. Somebody has put this wedge between us and we can't do a thing unless African-America is in it. I cannot talk about Brazil, which has this big set of Africans. I'd love to, but I don't have the language. Until I get the language, African-America and African-Caribbean, African-Jamaica have to work together. We have to work together. Um, we have been knocking on Africa's doors for years. You can't knock as a Jamaican. You can't knock as a St. Lucian. 
you have to knock as the diaspora. We have to get together to knock on, on, on Africa's door. I think I've said enough. And I, you know, <laughs> but, thank yeah. you, um, Sister Erna. I wanted to mention the fact, uh, a, a few things. Um, there are a number of of the, the, the students that I recognize in this, um, in the audience, though you, I know, can't see them, but I recognize so many of them and I want to thank them for being here, as well as a number of community uh, uh, elders, sisters, brothers that are in this um, session as well. Um, Sister Jackie, um, I recognize you um, um, in, the, in the chat. Um, and, but I also want to mention, because once I, got to you via the University of Stirling and then I left there and went to the University of North London which is now London Metropolitan University mm -hmm. That's when I would physically meet you and the person I have to thank for that eternally is um, my mentor and um, um, supervisor oh, Dr Patricia Murray um, so you can say hello to her. She's actually she's here. She's there. Yeah, I can see her name, and she can see you, and she can she can hear you. Yes, 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 yes. I'd love to see her. Yeah, we can't. See, the way it's it's done is it done. I understand. I understand. But yeah, yeah I she's understand that. here. I understand that. And she um, sent me I'm, a photograph. She sent me a photograph. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm ever um, grateful to her for for actually um, enabling you to um, to meet me. Um, mm -hmm. So um, Tony has just migrated her. Uh, she might not come on camera, but um, Patricia, mm -hmm. you are migrated. Actually, you can speak, Patricia, if you want to, because you're unmuted. She was so bold, I thought, that we, we met at a conference in Newcastle. You remember? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. The conference in Newcastle. But she had, been, she had been wanting a conference like that. I've been trying to get funds to do that conference. And I said to myself, well, what a bold person this is. <laughs> very, very bold person this is. There's no way in the Caribbean she could have gone and set up this and want to do what she, what she wanted to do. And no way in the Caribbean was that Newcastle conference possible because yes. we're still running away from it. Yeah. For whatever uh, Patricia, reason, I don't know. Patricia, can you hear all right? Can you want to speak? I never know why there's a delay if there's a reason, if they're like, if she's just listening. But um, anyway, Patricia's migrated. The other person who's um, here is Uncle Eric Huntley. Um, Uncle, do you want to say anything? Um, because you, I had spoken to you earlier on and asked if you had ever met um, Sister Erna and you said you hadn't, but you were obviously aware of, of her. Um, did you want to say anything at all? Oh, you would have to press the unmute um, button, Uncle. Um, it's that mic. You just press that to unmute yourself. There you go. Do it again, Uncle. That mic where it's red. You just did it a minute ago. I saw it and then it went back again. That's it. Okay, hello, greetings. Uh, greetings Ernest. to you, Good greetings and to you. Greetings, Michelle, greetings. greetings. Am I right in saying that you sent us um, Jane and Louise a manuscript before you sent it to, Matt, to New Beacon? You are right, you Am are I right? right, you are right, you are right, yes, you are yeah. right. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know why we didn't, why we, why we, we, didn't, we didn't publish it. I can't remember why, but anyway, I just mm -hmm. thought I'd mention that. Mm -hmm. But um, this evening has been really tremendous, a novel way of, of, um, of telling the story of using the photographs, using your memory and the oral tradition and the celebratory kind of activities you've had in, your, in the village and so on. It's been a really tremendous evening. One of the questions I wanted to ask you, but you partly, you partly answered it about the, the mention of, of male, male um, personalities in your, in your work. The, the, the school you went to, was it an all female school? El El the school I went to was called Excelsior, and it was a, uh, um, it was a, uh, it was a uh, what, what ed coeducational. Coeducation. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So that would have helped you. That would have helped you in a way in which you saw, you saw mm -hmm. the male, the male species of the family, and yeah, then your yes. story, your storytelling must have owed much to your father's, um, inclination in that direction, isn't it? 
Yes, yes, yes. Much to my father. Uh, and as I say, I have three brothers whom I quite like. Mm. They, they also would have contributed there. Eh? Yes. Um, yeah. one, of, one of the Adante, we have got in Guyana, we still have a lot of the remnants of African tradition. But mm. I, think, I, think, I think most of us live on the coastline. Eh? Uh, and, and much of it is bordering the sugar estates. So, and um, we can get from one place to the other in an hour and two hours on the coast. And so the tradition is not very rich in those parts, but in Jamaica, you have a very rich tradition because the geographical area, uh, the village life can be separated from the urban life and you can live without a lot of- Can, can, can we hear, get, get some more sound? It's very pale, very, very, very pale. I'm not hearing very well. Voice, okay, sorry, sorry. It's okay, um, Uncle. He was just saying about um, the 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 setup of the, the territory of uh, Jamaica and and, and um, Guyana. Mm -hmm. They able to have much more of a an engagement that's different in in, in Guyana. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you need to speak closer to the um to the. I'm right the, up into it. Not you, not I'm, you. We can hear you, all right. Is mm -hmm. just what you're saying. Can you hear us, or can you hear me, all right, Sister? I Earth? hear you, all right, but. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's Uncle Eric, he's probably- but What I'm saying is in Jamaica, you have a richer connection with, with the African tradition because of the remote, remoteness of, of the village life to the city. Whereas in Guyana, we are very coastal. We are just five or 10 minutes away from the city and from the urban areas. And the impact of the sugar estates and urban life is much more impacting on us our culture and the way in which we celebrate African traditions. Mm -hmm. It is still there. We have Kwe Kwe, and as um, Michelle was saying about Hope Tongue, Mocha, my, my wife is from Mocha, which has a very rich tradition, Boxton and so on. But in Jamaica, I really, I really admire the, the depth of the, um, of the African tradition, which still ha is maintained and, and, um, and um, keep going. Mm, yeah. Um, which, which you should hold on to, which you need to hold on to. Mm -hmm. That you say that, you say that, hold on to it, but there are, you know, that anything African, no good. Well. <laughs> so that um, you migrate out of it and you don't I want know, to look I, back I, at I, it at all. I know. And, um, you know, when, when people in Jamaica ask about black space, the question is, why black? Why black? We're out of many one people. Why black? Yeah, yeah. And then I have to tell them the story, which I, the, the thing which I tell everybody that I see the world in terms of a set of saucers piled on top of each other. And if one of the saucers is askew, all of the saucers will fall and break. And there is one that is askew, and that is the one that harks back to Africa. And if we don't do something about that, the whole, the whole thing is going to collapse. So black am I, black space, black African, and all like that. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank for you. the rest of the for the rest of the world and for the rest of that society. Um, okay. If I don't, one, do... if, if I may add. Thank one, you. One, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on. Of course, you may add. Uncle I may add. What, 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 add one, of, one, 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 one of my one of one of the realities I face personally, and for many people, many black people who live here or Erna, is that we live in white communities, and I live in a street where the majority of people are white. Mm. And we have we have we have done our part with communal and building a building a community of white people with ourselves, and we've had street parties. So what I'm, I'm not I'm not saying it because we've done it, but I'm saying that it is still possible to keep some kind of community li um, life al al alive wherever we live. It is it is still possible to. To do it with the limitations that we have faced with in England, mm -hmm. we have done it here on the street. I, I always say that I live in the best street in the whole world. Mm -hmm. We had three street parties, and uh, we have a very excellent relationship. For example, down the road, I saw um, somebody had put up on a tree a quotation by Martin Luther King's wife, widow rather, a quotation mm -hmm. on a tree pinned on 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 on, on, on the street. A quotation by Martin Luther King's wife, by Corella. Coretta. Uncle. I know that because that's my middle name. <laughs> thank okay. you, Uncle. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Uncle. I just want to um, to to note that um, Dr. Patricia Murray 
all of the, my students, everybody out there, when, uh, when you know that you have, you have a me and you have my, um, my, my PhD um, that I did in Comfort, there is no way I, I think that that could happen apart from the ancestors who were pushing me in that direction without this, my mentor before me, my, um, my supervisor throughout um, or, or a later part of my academic study. So um, thank you so much, um, um, Patricia, for coming on uh, camera and um, fire away. Um, um, Sister Erna, here is Patricia. Here is Patricia. Hi, Anna. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, the wonders of I can of see you. I can see you too. Can you see me? Excellent. Yes, I've, yes, yes. I've been marvelling at you there, Anna. I'm loving these photos so much. I didn't know so much personal history. Mm. Wow. Mm. Listen, we must have a Zoom. I need to catch up with you uh, in, in a more personal way soon. So now I know you can use the technology. We'll be in touch. I okay. can't use the technology. I have to drive. I came on down here um, last night in order oh, to prepare to be here. No, it's not. Oh, I see. It's not, it's not easy. Not, okay. It's not, okay. Easy, not easy. And the road is very rough. And um, it's also very expensive. Okay. Okay. So we'll have to just speak on the phone then. We but have nice to speak to on the you. phone. We have to speak on yeah. the phone, and we can speak on WhatsApp. Yeah, absolutely. We we started talking on WhatsApp. Okay, we'll do that. Really we'll great, Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. Yes, thank, yes, yes. thank you so and, much. And, and I've talked about how bold, how bold you were. <laughs> so bold, bold, bold. Little lady, so bold. Did you and all like that? Yeah, take on comfort. Yeah. Uh, take yes, on yes. comfort exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I even ask you to read read a little chuckle chuckle when I was just started to um draft out the um the something buried in the yard and you uh -huh. read I want to say that that it was only because you said some very kind words about it that I even kept to be truthful kept going because mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't really know um, necessarily what I was doing, but mm -hmm. very kind mm -hmm. in reading mm -hmm. the very early, early um, draft of that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. master's, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know if it was master's or PhD level, but thank you. I'm ever grateful to you. Um, so You're yeah, very welcome. <laughs> we have some comments uh, floating around, Tony. I've been, I'm just... I know I'm aware of the time, but I'm also aware that we we don't know how often we could ever get this to happen again. Carry on, do your thing, no problem. Okay, so um, anybody else in the chat? Let me have a look to see what um, you are saying. Um, they're just very positive comments, um, Sister Erna, um, thanking us for uh, the evening. Um, Tony, I just, but actually, can I also? Um, get back just so that I can um, show Dr. Ernest some bits that might also be useful. Um, let me just see. Um, so just to show you, um, Sister Erna, that in the UK, this is our version of the 1st of August now. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right, so right. We, do, um, we do a march usually, but since lockdown, it's been more of a gathering or a grounding, if you like, in Windrush Square, which is in Brixton. These images aren't of this year's one, because actually this is from, a, from the march, and it's with this campaign that's called Stop the Maangamizi. Um, the, you know, the genocide, um, we're charging genocide. So we march usually to parliament um, and we've been doing that for a number of years and it's led by um, Sister um, Esther Stanford and a number of others uh, in that. To also mention in terms of grounding and doing something that's communal, this is a ritual that I initiated um, to the river that's not far from me. <laughs> so just kind of like what uncle was just saying about, you know, being where you are and doing it from where you are as much as you can to, you know, if we can't get to Africa, let Africa somehow come to us. And um, so this is the ritual that we usually do. So in a like fashion, we would do a kind of a, a trek to the river to the river and do this this ritual. Um, I am minded that someone, Marsha, thank you for putting in the chat that I, I said that I would ask you a question about your great grand is your great grandmother 
Oh, yes, my great grandmother, yes. So that's the project that you're on now. You yes, yes, yes. I'm on the project that she has sent me to do. I'm right. at a point where I don't know really what she hoped to get because mm -hmm. she has a bad reputation in the family. And I thought I was going to find material which would, um, which would restore her to, to some sort of what's it, grandeur. Mm -hmm. I haven't found it yet. <laughs> I thought that's what she wanted, something that would make her look good. But I haven't found a thing to make her look good yet. But I'm still searching. Okay, so that's an ancestor. That's a, an ancestor of yours. And it's talking about the dealing with the process of how um, your ancestral spirits or even just characters in your stories come to you and compel you to um, be put into book form or, or, or whatever. Is this, this is, is this, is that a kind of a process or certainly just in this case for this ancestor? Well, yes, they just bounce on you, you know. For, 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 for nearly a year, this woman would come to me at, in the same clothes, with the same look, not saying anything, just looking at me for nearly a year. And I was wondering what she wanted of me. And then I said, she must want, she knows how, how she looks to the, to, to the descendants. She probably wants me to uh, sanitize her, her, her history. <laughs> and I tried, I set out to do the work and to see whether in the process of doing some decent historical research, I could find a sanitizer. As I've said, I haven't found it yet. I'm not saying it isn't there. I just haven't found it yet. The but lady is still not beautiful. Okay, <laughs> okay. I wonder if um, is the case whereby she was, however, whatever the character, the trait was that she was, whether it doesn't matter that she's not sanit sanitized or not, you know, um, you know, the best representative, but she was, and that she was, um, you know, she had that liberty um, and. You know, she just wants that acknowledgement. You know, she 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 just was yes, and wants to be yes, yes, yes. just as that rather than anything. That would make for a brilliant character, I would think. You know, um, this is me. Um, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I wonder if it's that, that skinny, that skinny man, my grandfather. Remember my grandfather, yes. my paternal mm -hmm. grandfather. Yeah, he is her son. Okay. Okay. And he told my father many things many things which came down to me. But he's fairly silent on that lady. Right. Mm -hmm. But she might be a warrior. Um, the reason why I'm saying it is because there's somewhere where, I don't know whether it was yesterday when I was doing the thing on Sunday or when it was, mm -hmm. talking about ancestors and we were talking about um, the fact that, yeah, you will have, oh yes, who do you call on? I know where it's from, it's from Ancestral Voices, this video that I was watching. You will call on your ancestors and people always ask the question, well, who are the ancestors that we're going to call on? But well, most people in an ideal world, we'll call on the, ben, ben, uh, the beneficent ancestors. Um, however, what this brother was saying is that we would also call on, um, we would also call if we had a war or, 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 or something that we needed to do where we require those ancestors that are a bit feisty, you know, a bit aggressive, a bit, you know, in your face, then we would call on them, those ones as well, because they're all part of the, the, the process. Yes, if we want to do something where it's about holiness and what have you and so on, where it's about the holisticness of the community, we would try and call on the beneficent ones. But the ones that, you know, are going to fight, you know, and they're a bit aggressive or a bit however way they are, we call on them for specific um, actions. That's Wish it was like that. <laughs> Wish it was like that. But I tell you, this, the family knows her as a lady who was married to this white man. And he left her because I have the will. He left her three plantations. And she's not supposed to, she was, if she married, she would lose everything. Well, one of her relatives tells me, you think she's a fool? She, <laughs> she, she, she sell out the world or something and then she got married. <laughs> All right. Which meant that my grandfather, who was due to go to high school, couldn't go to high school because there was no money. And the general thought in the family is that she and the man she married, near out the money. Okay. 
So it's no warrior business. It's no lady fighting, no nothing. Unless I can prove otherwise, which I haven't found the material yet. Still, she sounds like a fascinating character to me. And yes, yes, yes. I, I am becoming fascinated by her too. Yeah. And I know, I know I will find it because um she did have five children to look after. I have a feeling that she parcels some of them out, but um I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'm trying to put myself in her shoes. And I'm getting there. But oh. until I get those shoes, she still remains that lady who brought poverty to her line. Oh, okay. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> okay. I look forward to our other conversations about um, this uh, character. Um, I'm just going through the chat line again. There is Maxine. Thank you so much. Maxine Tomlinson um, says that this is one of the best Zoom talks I've had the pleasure of attending. Look at that. Thank you, um, Sister um, Max Maxine, for that. Um, yes, it will be available, Sister Malika Booker. Do you want to say anything else than that? We, we're so privileged to have some very uh, in, in interesting and wonderful uh, speakers in themselves and writers um, listening to you, uh, Dr. Erna. Um, Tony, do you know who oh, Luce, Lucille Jankeri? I must know you. Um, she's talking about data being expensive in Jamaica. Um, throughout the pandemic, at least 40% of the population has not been online. So it's wonderful to hear um, you. And she asked a question earlier. I can't see that question. As I'm There's a question about how does one join Black Space next year? How does one join Black Space in the future? Well, what happens, how people get to Black Space? I have met people who just turn up. I was in England when I met um, somebody, the rest of you probably know, Robbie Shillian. And I, he said he knew me. And I said, how come you know me? And he said, I've even been to your house. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, how did that go? He says, I am the light-skinned Black who was sitting at the back of the room. He found his way. People find their way. Mm -hmm. People find their way. And one mm -hmm. situation I saw at the back of the room, two fellows in Nigerian outfit. I don't know how they found their way, but they find their way. So mm -hmm. I, all I can say is spirit. Mm -hmm. If the spirit send you, you come. Yes, yes. And you yeah. will come. Yeah. And that is how it has always been. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you send me an email, I will put your name on the mailing list. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got a shout out, Caution Newland. He's online as well, paying attention to this um, very interesting conversation. And Caution has a book out now. I think it's called The River Through Time or something like that. And it has elements of um, uh, fantasy and spirituality history within it. And I think it might, it might be a better, I'm not quite sure, but it's definitely out right now. So shout out to Mr. Caution Newland. Welcome. And um, I hope you'll put the title properly in the, um, in the chat. Um, um. Portia. Um, thank you, Sister Jackie, for your um, saying thank you um, for organizing this tremendous event, which gave me a valid experience of Sister Ernest's stories. Um, what else? About honoring our African selves. Tremendously beautiful and courageous. Because Sister Jackie is a member of the Pan African Community Society Community Forum, which I mentioned at the beginning, and I was saying that. Um, well, I mentioned this to you, that I um, I introduced you to in a community setting, which I do um, as much as I can. Um, one of the things I do, did want to ask you, um, as this picture kind of shows, this is you in the note that you sent, was saying this is you dancing mm -hmm. at a community event. Do you, lot, do you do a lot of dancing? How do you do socializing? What do you do when you're not working? Or is that, do you just work? <laughs> I really to think I just work, which is quite bad. But when the music start, man, if you should see the, the parts, the third the, the, the um images for the 31st of July, the vigil, you wouldn't recognize me because I'm flying as high as a bird and I'm not Ooh. on any weed, but I'm just dancing because the music take me. Um last Sunday, we couldn't have our own um drumming and stuff like that on the Saturday night, but uh, we were invited to the Maroons. The Maroon had their celebrations on the Sunday, the 1st of August. 
and Maroons from all over, from the three or, or five or something that um, communities in Jamaica were there. And the drums, the drums, the drums, the drums, the drums, man. And so you know, I would dance and I dance and I dance. I didn't get in spirit, thank God. But there were people who got in spirit. And there was a young man there whom the ancestors took. I was very, very frightened because he, he couldn't get up, couldn't get up at all. He was down on the, on, the, on the ground and couldn't get up. They lick him down. But one of the sisters who was with me, she is African-American and she is very high up in the spiritual thing. She said she raised him up. Well, he was raised up, however it was done. And as soon as the drum started again, he, the spirits took him again and he was running all about the place and running the bush and running in the forest. And I was very worried when I left because he had not been found. But they told us, don't worry, these things happen. And the ancestors know what they're doing. So yeah. um, they wrote me and told me that he was found. He came back and he, he came back with the message. It was just that it was a private message and they didn't choose to tell me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is just, that's about the trance, which is a, a session I keep meaning to do because of course the book that I've done is, is come for the ritual art of trance, but I'm, they keep telling me that I need to do, I've never done a presentation on trance itself, which is like one of that re re retentions that, you know, it takes place, but I've not done a presentation. I personally have not done a presentation on, but feel um, that time is imminent. I wanted to kind of show a bit of continuum that um, live and direct. I don't, have you ever seen these pictures, um, Sister Erna? Me? Yes, yes, yes. And I um, was... Yeah, this is where you won um, um, some money. I got an award, um, yes, an award. Uh, and from the cement company, mm -hmm. and they helped us to create to make Daddy Rock. This is all at Daddy Rock. Daddy Rock look like a center where we can keep on coming down and communicating with the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is here. This is why in the first picture with you and your son, I had mother, mothering one, and then I had mother, and this is mothering two. This is just to show that you were obviously instrumental in this happening. And it's like when I- Oh yes, oh yes, it takes me 15 years. Yes, because yeah, yeah because what happened was I put in Woodside in Google, and of course it's like Erna is Woodside, um, yes. Jamaica, and then you came up um, in that search, and this is how I came to these beautiful pictures. And, and so, if you're going to go look at this, this just looks like just looks like an amazing place to be able to. It is an amazing place. It's an amazing place, and I'm hearing of um more people wanting to connect with ancestors. I mean, even religious church people now, I have a set of church people who want to come to this space here to um, learn and to connect with, 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 with the spiritual thing. Mm, yeah, uh -huh. as well. Okay, and then I think we're nearly there. Um, I wanted to just mention something personal. Um, uh -huh. When I last, I don't know whether it was when I last saw you or when I saw you before about whether this was a Newcastle, whether it was <laughs> um, before, but um, I had mentioned to you that I was doing, I used to do these pamper days where I'd get black women together and um, we would just do um, pampering, healing, you know, all different things. And you did something that just always stuck with me. Um, <clears throat> you kind of embraced me and you, you embraced me by my forehead. And at the time I was like, okay, I'm going along with it, but I didn't really know what it was. Um, and um, later on, I started to do this, or rather when my, my grandfather, um, I had a moment where he manifested spiritually. And um, this was something he did uh, with my mum. And, um, and then it, I remembered that you had done this. And then I saw this image with the on, with the indigenous, the Maori here, um, touching foreheads. And then I found this picture. Um, so did you have, why did you do that? Is this, is this correct? This, or were you just- It's not correct or anything like that. The spirit moves and this is the okay. spirit moving and Ori or your Ori and my Ori touching. Ashe. Ashe. Mm -hmm. at the time I wouldn't even know what Uri was 
or I wouldn't have even thought about anything like that. Um, so I give thanks for that. And this is what we are privileged to be having, the Uri to Uri, consciousness to consciousness, destiny to destiny, heart to heart, soul to soul, third eye to third eye, communication with our, somebody in the chat put Nana, Nana Erna Brodba. So I thank you for um, that privilege. I don't know who this, who's this picture? I just, I just kind of liked how regal you looked in it. Um, I don't know who this person is. <laughs> You this is me in my older days. It's <laughs> this is before. This is before now. This is before now. But I know because people don't days. know you do the dimensional thing. <laughs> and I don't know who that. Oh, oh, oh! I think I know. I gave a talk at um in, in Toronto, and there was this fellow. I don't know who he is, but he um he was so excited that he came to hug me up. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that makes and sense. And people were begging me, hi, hi, hi. Look a little bit more as if you're enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't oh, enjoying it, so um, okay. I, I wasn't enjoying it. Thank you so much, Dr. Okay. Nana, sister. All right, all right. Well, we have, wonderful. To we have to continue relating, you know. I think my great-grandmother requires something like this. I think she requires, I think she wants something like this. Okay, good. We'll do it. We'll make it happen. I, I just want to I just want to mention somebody before we, we leave. Um, this lady is called um, Mother Marjorie. She's Trinidadian, she's down south. And I want to tell you, it's going to take some a little bit of time. Um, I was in Trinidad and I was invited to go to lunch somewhere, but at the time I was vegan. And I want, I didn't know whether they knew. So I was looking around for some vegetables to take to the dinner with lunch and with me. And in the process, Merle Hodge, whose name you all must know, Merle said, I'm going down south to a spiritual Baptist meeting and um, a, Yor a Yoruba meeting. You want to come? And of course I wanted to go. So I gave up the business of cooking for the vegetables mm -hmm. and went down south. And you, you know the tables. You work tables. I don't know if you work tables, but there are tables. Tables are there. And the tables had on everything you could imagine. Bun, bread, vegetables, fruits, tea, any rum, anything you could think of was on those tables. And you know when the table broke and I sat down and they started sharing up, somebody brought me the biggest head of lettuce I've ever seen. It wasn't lettuce and grapefruit. It wasn't lettuce and, and rum. It was lettuce and anything. But I said to myself, this is a confirmation. There's a spirit out there who knows what I want. Thank God. I can walk much easier now. Somebody knows what I want. Because here this big head of lettuce, which I can now take to the luncheon, although I couldn't go and buy it myself. But the other thing is that Mother Marjorie, who was the head of this, took me into her yard, her spirit yard. And there I learned something which I'm telling you all about. We have sometimes wondered why we were taken out of Africa. And as I stood in Mother Marjorie's yard, I knew why. The thing is, Mother Marjorie has these spirit boxes. I don't know if you've seen the spirit boxes. She had these spirit boxes. And the spirit boxes, she had everything. She had Kung Fu. She had, uh, she had Yoruba. She had Akan. She even had Rasta spirits there. And as, as to there, I said, you know, this is what has happened in, in Africa. Africa. There are parts of Africa, large parts of Africa, Nigeria, for instance, where is Ifa, Ghana, which is Akan. But here I am standing up where they all are. And that is why I was brought through the Middle Passage so that I can be part, I can, I can have in my head, in my spirit, all of these spirits of Africa, all of them, plus whatever changes we have made by virtue of the fact that we had some special, we had some special occasions for coming here. Like we know about the Middle Passage, we know about this, which some of the Africans don't know. We in the new world have that. Okay. So I said, this is it. We have to learn from all of these traditions. They are always to imbibe, they're always to understand, they're always to guide us. And this is my last statement. They are there. We are grateful, we are here. All of those spirits came with us, and all of those spirits are available to us. Sila. 
Sila, Sila and Ashe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I think we need to let you go because I hope you're not going back today. You're staying. No, no, no. I'm not going back today. I'm not going back today. As a matter of fact, I'm staying over to do some research, to search, search some more for my great grandmother oh. in the archives. Okay. Okay. Ashe, I'm brilliant. Thanks. All right, then. Well, thank you for listening to me. Here I am doing this, 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 this Zoom. This is my, this is my fourth Zoom. Can't say I like it any better. But uh, <laughs> so it is, the world has to move on. I can't keep it back, but I'm going to learn. One day you are doing Zoom and I'll be sitting in my own house doing the Zoom. Absolutely. I'll and one day I'll be, I'll be with you in your own house. <laughs> okay. And I had hoped to come this year. Thank you so much again. Okay, okay then. Good Thanks then. everybody who's, who's, who's stayed on till now, all of, of the students and you know, everybody, thank you so much. It's been, it's been wonderful. Thank you again, Patricia. Uncle Eric, I'm glad you got to meet uh, Sister Erna. Thank you. Yes, I enjoyed it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tony? Okay, then. Yeah, that's it from me. See you next time. Thank See you. you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Team so. Thank you so much, you said, yes. Oh, you're seeing some of the chats. <laughs> yeah, I'll, um, yeah. What is it? People on, <laughs> they don't want to go. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Oh, Ernest email, somebody's asking. Um, I didn't see it. It was last year. Um, Tony, should we send the email to um, Lucille? Um, I think last year she had separately had, um, people from South Africa, from oh. Fiji. Oh, 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 oh. All right, you're in Jamaica. Okay, Lucille, I'm seeing that. I found the earphone. Um, let me see how. Come on. Give me a minute, Lucille. Stay, 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 stay on there. This is where you put it. Um, oh, my ears. I found this, but this one can't fit in my. My my ears. Don't worry about it, sir. My ears are are needed. <laughs> we can hear you. That's why they um. That's why they. They. Um, okay, Lucille, I've sent it. All right. Mm. All right, Sister Erna. Um, okay, then. Another time we'll be in touch. Until. Thank you so much. I will okay. we'll speak with you via the WhatsApp. Yes, yes, yes. We'll talk. Okay, yeah. All, All right. right. Okay, then. Good okay. And sunshine is in your head, Ty. Oh, thank you. All right. I'm asking for your email and I'm trying to get them. Yes. There you go. All right then. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.